is uh, first for small sizes you have a drag reduction proportional to the rhythmic size, but that eventually saturates uh, this proportionality breaks down and you get a maximum drag reduction. So the performance of a given rhythmic geometry is given in the, by the slope in this uh, viscose uh, linear routine and by how early or how late the breakdown happens. So one, one of the important results that I showed last year is that uh, if you express the size of a rivulet in the terms of the square root of the roof section, uh, the different geometries scale up quite well, uh, so their breakdown happens more or less for the same size in this group section units. So that kind of hints that uh, when looking at what the nature of this breakdown is, uh, this, this might be a quantity to look into the group cross section. And the other interesting result is the appearance of these spiral coherent structures for sizes larger than the, than the size of breakdown. Uh, this is one normal velocity, this is a spring wise and spiral duration, this is a one normal plane very close to the region four or five more units. And you can see lots of coming in and, and out of the groups with a spinalized coherence. If you look at the average perturbation flow, uh, uh, which would be that thing over there, so then it's one on the direction and it's three wise, you see these roller structures, which is what this velocity coming up at the end of the end is. And uh, those kind of structures have been reported before for coral surfaces and, and for rough surfaces, plant canopies, for instance. And they are always attributed to Kelvin and most instability. So this is what really what we wanted to do into the physics of this thing that is not so well understood. The physics regime has been explained for a long time. So this is what I said last year. Now the two questions that I'm going to uh, talk about uh, today are, are these uh, rollers really important for the degradation of the drag? And the second one is, is this really connected to a Kelvin and most instability? Okay, so, for the first question, uh, are these guys important for the drug liberation? Um, I'll use this figure down here, which is a drug breakup into several terms. Uh, if, if this is done by manipulation of the equilibrium, uh, the momentum equilibrium of the uh, mean flow, and uh, you get a, a term which is basically the slip velocity at the plane of the ripple tips. And that's proportional to the ripple test. This is the viscous behavior, the drug reaction in the viscous regime. But this continues going on even after the breakdown, which was pretty surprising. The, the velocity within the groups is basically itself similar through all the range. So the slip, the velocity at the top of the ripple of the ripple is, is also proportional to the size. So what's uh, destroying the drug reduction is this term which is the um, extra renal stress that you get on, on the whole channel compared to the smooth pole. If you look at the spectra, for instance, of the wall normal velocity, which is what is plotted here, this is 2D spectra at a wall normal plane, uh, six wall units above the ripple tips. And this would be spring-wise wavelengths and span-wise wavelengths. So the idea of this is that uh, you, you see what wavelengths, what sizes are carrying energy or energy significance. And when you compare the spectrum to the black one, which is the, the spectrum with a smooth wall, you see little difference for small sizes of ripples. Some increasing intensity, which is uh, due to the permeability uh, at that plane, because the flow can go to the groups. But then you see these new structures appearing. Actually, they appear right at the, at the breakdown. And then they, they grow in intensity. But uh, they basically have a fixed streamwise wavelength, which is roughly 151 units. And uh, they can have spanwise wavelengths as long as you want. These are the elongated structures with a fixed spacing that I showed in the previous figure. So their intensity grows with ribbon size, and that is this exponential effect that is deteriorating the drag. But, the, but their size is essentially constant. Um, and if, if you do this integral of the extra renal stress, restricting yourself just to the, these structures, to this white window, which would enclose the, the, these new rolling structures, you get this blue curve, 
which is 65-70% of the whole next revenue of stress. So these guys really are giving most of the drug regulation. And now the other one. Is, is this Calvin Helmholtz? Okay, like Calvin Helmholtz is an inviscid stability and it's homogeneous in the spinal direction. So if this is what happening, what, what's happening right above the roofs, then we should be able to see if we do a linear stability model which is inviscid and two-dimensional. So it just has springless wave planes and more normal directions. So we have to solve Rayleigh's equations. But then the riblets are not homogeneous in the spinal direction, so we have to mimic their presence to reproduce their presence by some kind of boundary condition which is homogenized average in the spinal direction. Now to build that uh, boundary condition, we go into the grooves, look at the flow there. As I said before, it's self-similar through the whole range. So it's basically the same as for vanishing the Reynolds number. The, the local Reynolds number here is the size of the uh, Reynolds number of units, which is at most D20 <coughs> in this range. So it makes sense that this is Stokesian flow. Um, the, 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 the flow in the cross section is very weak, so the, the pressure is basically constant in the section. So you would have pressure oscillations that are coming from the other flow, moving the flow back and, uh, back and forth in the channel in a Stokes manner. And to, uh, for, because of continuity, you would have water velocity coming in and out, in or out, to make up for the velocity deficit of that motion. So, so when you do those numbers, you, you come to a parameter in the, boundary condition, in the boundary condition, which is a length scale, which you could say is a penetration length of the flow in the, in the groups. How easy it is for the flow to go into the groups and then through the group. And, okay, so that's our math setup. Now we test that uh, on two kinds of profiles. Mm. Turbulent approximations of, from CES and a piecewise linear profile which gives nice analytical solutions so where you, you can see the, the numbers clearly. That's good for uh, obtaining qualitative information and then for the quantitative stuff we use the turbulent profiles. So the results of that analysis are here for the piecewise linear profile and for the turbulent profile. This is growth rate of the most amplified wave number, which is the one associated to the boundary condition, and the convection velocities. I want to uh, well, I first talk about the, the piecewise linear one. Um, this the instability is basically neutral for zero penetration length. It will be a smooth wall, and then as the length grows you get more and more instability and for an infinite value you actually recover the Kelvin Helmholtz equations for the piecewise linear profile. So yes, you can say that this is a Kelvin Helmholtz like instability in the limit of very high, very large uh, groove uh, size. It, it would be a Kelvin Helmholtz, pure Kelvin Helmholtz instability. And uh, these are results for the Turbian profiles. Uh, these uh, results scale with the height where the um, Singularity is in the piecewise linear profile, and this one surprisingly scaling wall units. Well, surprisingly, because there was no wall units in the model. It's it's all in the profile. All the information from the viscosity is in the profile. It in our DNS is being scaled in wall units. The size of the of the rollers did scale in wall units, so, so that it makes sense uh, compared to this. And uh, also, uh, the, the, the comparing these two figures. You can see a relationship between what would be H here and there would be something like 10 whole units. And that also makes sense because all the energy in this case is coming from the singularity, which is at H. And here it's coming from where most of the, what, what is here a second order a derivative singularity, there is a smear in, in between 5, 15 whole units, something like that. So this H would be a, a point uh, input of energy here is uh, between 5 and 15 more units, but scales uh, for the And the other thing is the, the, um, the growth of the uh, instability with the uh, riblet size. If I plot just that, the maximum amplification against the riblet size, you see that uh, the, the instability is basically neutral uh, for small sizes, and then for something like 3, 4, of this penetration length, it shoots. And then you would get the Kelvin Helmholtz thing, instability. And going back to the scaling with the square root of the groove cross section, 
Uh, if you now compare the, the, these lengths that you obtain from the viscous analysis of the flow within the groups with the square root of the group cross section, they actually have a quite nice fit, meaning that the, this um, length scale, is, which is related to the group cross section, is what's really uh, determining when the breakdown happens, when the instability develops. So I'll just leave the conclusions there for you to read, and I'll be happy to take any questions. <laughs>